Today, a hotly debated subject. What is the best way to teach immigrant children? Well, come June, you may be asked to vote on a ballot initiative which would drastically change bilingual education in our state. Many of these new students have limited English skills. Instead of teaching them in their primary language, like is done now, kids would be taught primarily in English. Will this help mainstream children into regular classrooms, or does it set up minority kids to fail? Hear both sides on today's online. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Donna Cordova, and welcome to today's online. Now, you may have seen this headline in the paper this week. It reads, nearly 70% want to end school bilingual education. Other polls put that number above 80%. Now, is that the reality? Do people really want to overhaul the way children are taught to speak English in California's public schools? Or will that sentiment change when people better realize what's actually being proposed? As Malia Maddox shows us, for some, it is not a clear-cut issue. This class and the bilingual education it represents are at the center of a controversy about how California's children should be educated. Recent polls show 80 percent of Californians, including an overwhelming majority of the Latino voters, feel bilingual education should be abandoned. Even those who support bilingual education say they know why parents support the initiative to ban it. I don't have a quarrel with those parents. I really back them up because if we don't have adequate run programs, then they're not just not worth keeping. But if we make an honest attempt and really provide these children with the services, then yes, immersion is the way to go. The problem, say critics, is the bilingual system is often a mess. Some children are being educated in a haphazard method, which changes from year to year and does not prepare them adequately in English. Bilingual education should do a better job at moving people from a different language to English. But Lieutenant Governor Gray Davis said today this initiative is not the way to resolve the problem. I would prefer these issues not be uh, battled out at a political level headed by the, um, someone who once run for, ran for governor. Is it really something that teachers, principals, and parents ought to work out amongst themselves? Mm -hmm. But we may not have that option, unfortunately. The initiative is expected to pass at this point. But bilingual teacher Patty Gardner wonders if parents understand what they're supporting. I think that the initiative is being presented in a way that um, causes Latino people to say, well, yes, I do want my child to learn English. And I think that's why they uh, come out in favor of the UNCE initiative. Roughly 17,000 students in Sacramento County are enrolled in classes like these, and educators here say it's their best chance of success in English. That's because this immersion program is run correctly. According to educators, it's consistent and brings children up to standard reading and writing levels in both Spanish and English. Creating bilingual, bicultural U.S. citizens Advocates want classes across California to be changed into this rather than abandoned. Malia Maddock, Fox 40 News. Again, those comments by Gray Davis came on October 16th. Now, here is what is being proposed. This initiative would require kids to be taught English as soon as they start school. It would provide sheltered English immersion classes. It would allow parents to keep their kids in bilingual education if it seems best for the child. And it provides $50 million for 10 years to fund adult English literacy programs for immigrants and non-immigrants alike who agree to help tutor children with English. Spearheading this initiative is the Silicon Valley businessman Ron Unz. He is here representing the English for the Children campaign. We also have Kelly Hayes Wright representing Citizens for an Educated America. That is a group opposing the initiative. Thank you both for being with Thank us you. today. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Enz, I understand that so far we have, uh, you've got, you were able to gather over 750,000 signatures. Um, we don't know yet if this will uh, acquire, uh, qualify for the June ballot, but we do have the signatures to it do that. It looks very likely it will qualify. We actually filed almost 800,000 signatures, which is nearly twice the number that we need. So I really think this initiative will be on the June 98 ballot. And we should know by next month. Exactly. Okay, now what prompted all of this? How did you get involved in this? Well, I've been opposed to bilingual education for many, many years. I've always thought it didn't seem to make sense. It didn't seem to work. 
But this particular effort was prompted by a series of articles I read in last year's Los Angeles Times describing a group of immigrant Latino parents in downtown Los Angeles who actually had to begin a public boycott of their local elementary school because the school was refusing to teach their children English. And when things have reached the point where parents have to pick at a school to force that school to teach English to their children, I think something has to be done about it. And Ms. Wright, uh, what we saw here was an example of people taking a stand, making a stand about the bilingual education system in our state. Doesn't that send a message that things need to be changed? Well, Don, I think we need to be very clear here. This is not a referendum on bilingual education. What we're voting on on June 2nd is a very specific proposal that will actually cause more problems than it hopes to solve. Here's what the Ron Owens Initiative will do. It will take all limited English-speaking children and put them together in one classroom with a teacher who is forbidden by the law, by this new initiative, and under the threat of a lawsuit, from speaking to them in any language other than English. Now, after that year, 180 days, those children will be put back into regular classrooms, even if they haven't mastered enough in academic English to be able to succeed. Okay, let's go ahead and take it from that point. Is that what is being proposed? That's utter nonsense. That has no relationship to what we're proposing. Well, that children, seems to be from what we're reading. Well, but, but it really isn't. I mean, what we're talking about is taking children when they start school and normally putting them in a sheltered English immersion class, certainly not mixing together all the children from all the different grade levels, unless under the most extreme circumstances, like a tiny rural school, it's really necessary. Okay. Also, teachers May are I not. Read from the initiative? Uh, excuse me. Teachers are not forbidden to te to speak the native language to the child. The, Lishiv simply says that the overwhelming language of instruction should be English. Using a few words of Spanish or a few words of Vietnamese or a little of that to help the child along is perfectly permissible. Now let me ask you this. In that type of situation, if you do have children, which is what we would have, children who very, very, in many cases, very limited or often no English skills whatsoever, can that not be setting them up for an incredibly frightening situation or fear of even speaking up? Um, if they do not know the English language, how do we expect them to also learn the other types of things that they're expected to learn in school? Th that's a very good point, but remember almost all the children we're talking about are starting school when they're five or six years old. They're very young children. They're at an age when it's easiest for them to learn another language. And what we're talking about is putting them in a sheltered English immersion class with a teacher specially trained in teaching English to such young children. What the teacher would do is simply bring them along in the English language during a period of a few months or a year, they would take them to become reasonably fluent and knowledgeable in English. And once they learn English, they can be mainstreamed in with the other children. The only way you learn English is to be taught English. And right now, it's not happening. And you're not reading that in the initiative. Uh, I'm reading right from the initiative. It says, local schools shall be permitted to place in the same classroom English, English learners of different ages. It also says, local schools shall be encouraged to mix together in the same classroom English learners from different native language groups. What's going to happen in the second year of the Ron Owens experiment is that we'll have only the new children in this untested experiment, the new kindergartners and the new immigrants. Here's where we'll more likely see the scenario of a 13-year-old boy and a 6-year-old girl in the same classroom. A new 13-year-old immigrant boy who's you know, learning algebra for the first time in with a group of 6-year-old kindergartners who are learning to count. Could that not foster embarrassment? Cool. And, and, and 